By the end of this video, you will see how to configure Google Analytics page view event using Google Tag Manager, Customer Pixels, and Shopify Store. First thing first, you need to make sure that you have proper access to Shopify. So go to the Shopify backend and then click on Settings. The only thing we need is access to the Customer Pixel section, which is right here. Once you see that you have access to customer events and you can make or create any kind of pixels you want, then that is fine. The second thing we need is a Google Tag Manager container. If you already have a Google Tag Manager container, that's well and good. But since I don't have a Google Tag Manager container, I'm going to create a container in my existing account. So let's click on Create Container and rename this container. You can rename it whatever you want. And since we are working with a Shopify store, which is a web platform, let's click on Web and hit Create. Great. If you're working with a client, you just need to make sure that you have proper access to their Google Tag Manager container. You can check that by going to the admin section and under the container on the right side, click on user management. All you have to make sure is that you have published access to this container. Lastly, we need to make sure that you have admin access or editor access to Google Analytics account. To verify that, you can just go back to their Google Analytics account and then click on the admin section and then click on property access management. Here you can see all kind of access other people have and what level of access you have. Identify your email address right here and check if you have editor access or admin access. Great. First thing first, we need to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on the website. So let's go to Google Tag Manager container to get the configuration code. Once you're on your Google Tag Manager container, there are multiple ways to get the container code. Either you can select the ID right here, or you can click on install Google Tag Manager container, which will give you the snippet for the head and the body tag. In the new customer pixel section, you cannot add script tag. So only thing we need is this JavaScript part. So let's copy this JavaScript code and go back to the Shopify backend. And under the setting, let's click on customer events. We are going to create a new custom pixel. So let's click on add custom pixel and let's rename it as data layer code for Google Tag Manager. Great. Let's hit on add pixel and under the code section, we are going to paste this code. You have to be really careful about these settings that I'm going to show you. Make sure that your permissions are set to not required and your data sale is set to data selected does not qualify as data sales. Perfect. Once you have done all of these things, click on the save button on the top and then click on connect button. What this is going to do is connect the Google Tag Manager container with this customer pixel. So let's take one minute to understand what our customer pixel, how they are different from our traditional approach of using liquid files and how they are restricted. First of all, customer pixels only fire inside a sandbox. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to the front end of the store. Great. If I'm going to hit inspect on any of the page of this website and let's try to find the GTM ID that we have just added here. Once you search for GTM, you will be able to see that we have the GTM container code firing on this page. However, this code is firing inside an iframe and this iframe is a sandbox which prevents us to access the parent website. However, still track the events however we want. To verify if the tag manager container is firing properly, you can use this Google Tag Legacy Assistant Chrome extension and you can see that our Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on the website. One backdrop of this customer pixel event is that we cannot use the Google Tag Manager standard preview debug mode to verify if the events are firing or not. However, there are multiple ways to see if the event tracking is working fine, which I'm going to show you in the next step. Great. Since our Google Tag Manager container is firing properly on the website, the next step is to add the Google Analytics page view event on our Google Tag Manager container. So let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container and under workspace, we are going to create the tags, triggers and variables that we need for the Google Analytics page view event. Under the tag sections on your Google Tag Manager container, click on the new button. Since the page view event is going to fire on all pages, we want to use the event for all pages. However, since this is not the standard Google Tag Manager implementation, things are going to be a little different from here on. We don't want to fire the events for all pages event. We want to fire all of the events on custom events that we have created. If you will click on the description of this video, you will find a link where you can get the code that we need for the customer pixel event. Once you have copied the code from the description, you can go to the Shopify backend and right below the Google Tag Manager container code that you have added, you can paste the code right here. Great. Let's hit on save and go back to the website front end to show you how the code looks like. If you will go to the console now and hit refresh on the page again, the customer pixel is going to fire some events that we can see here. Now we can see that the page view event has fired on this page. And if you will expand this page view event, you will see that we have some other event options such as event data and then we have page data and then we have user data parameters. However, since we don't have other information right now, this is the only event that is firing. 
The name of the event is page view and this is where we are going to use all the information from these custom events and then create the tags, triggers and variables for our Google Tag Manager container. So to create the first event for the page view event, we want to use this page view trigger for that. So let's copy the name of the trigger and go back to the Google Tag Manager container to create the trigger. On the top right corner, you can see the plus button and let's select a custom event. The name of the trigger is page underscore view and let's rename this tag to custom event page underscore view and let's hit save. Once you have saved this tag, the next thing we have to do is go to the Google Analytics and then select the Google tag. The only thing we need here is the tag container ID. So let's go back to the Google Analytics 4 account and look for the measurement ID. Once you have copied the measurement ID, you can go back to the Google Tag Manager container and create a new variable for this one. Let's create a constant variable and let's rename it to GA4 measurement ID prod. Since this is for the production live environment, I'm going to write prod variable right there. And let's hit save. Let's save this trigger as GA4 configuration tag because this is going to fire all the configuration settings for the tag and let's hit save. Unfortunately, we won't be able to test this event using the preview window. Therefore, we have to submit this container. So let's do, let's rename this as GA4 page view event and hit publish. Once the Google Tag Manager container has been published on the website, there are multiple ways to verify whether the tag is firing properly on the website or not. To do that, all you have to do is go back to the website backend and then go to Networks tab. Here on the top, you will have an option to filter. I'm going to filter for a request called collect and then I'm going to refresh the page and now all the requests that are going to be sent to Google Analytics will show right here. If you're using the legacy Chrome extension, you can see that the Google Analytics tag has fired and on this demo window, you can see that there was one request created and if you open the payload, you can see what kind of event was fired when this page has loaded. You can see that the event name was page view and this was successfully sent to this GID. You can also verify the same information by going to the Google Analytics account and you will see the user coming into the real time view after a few seconds. So let's go to the real time window. We can see the user that has just landed on the home page and this is the user. Let's go to some other pages of the website to verify if the event is working fine for all the other pages. Let's go to the catalog page and then let's also go to any other product pages. We can see that on this, the iframe has also loaded and inside this iframe, there is going to be a collect request that is being sent back to the Google Analytics. We can see this is the collect request and this was for the page view event. Let's also go to any other product pages and for the second parent, we can also go back to our Google Analytics reports and decide the real time view. We will be able to see the second page view request and the third page view request that just came in. So this is the second page view request that has just landed for us. And this is the URL of the second page, which is the collection page. And now since we are on the third page, which is for the product title to this event should be added inside Google Analytics after a few seconds. Great, the third page view event has already been added and this is for the product page too. You can also verify the same information from the request tab and we can see that the page view event has fired for page. Summarizing this video, what we have done is that first thing we added the Google Tag Manager container using the customer pixel. Second thing is that we added the tracking code that is going to fire a page view event on the sandbox. And third thing we did is create a configuration tag inside Google Tag Manager that will fire this event. However, once you're copying the code from the description of the video, you can also also find a container which has already been configured for Google Analytics. All you have to do is just replace the measurement ID inside the GA4 prod variable and you should be good to go. If you want to see how to track the view item event for GA4, just click here.